What's happening, Fusion friends? Welcome to another episode, one of my favorite episodes of the year, the best and worst lures of 2022. If you've been a subscribed Fusion friend for some time, you know what's coming up. I'm gonna go over the lures that I really liked. I feel like they hit the bullseye and they worked in my, you know, normal rotation. And I'm also gonna go over those lures that I feel like fell a little bit short and kind of flopped. I've also seen a lot of new names and faces in the comments, so thank you for everybody that's just now subscribing. Uh, I'm blown away every year by the, the amount of subscribers I see continually going up, so thank you all. But hey, listen, enough sappiness, enough yapping. Let's get into lure number one. If you've watched my videos throughout the year, it's probably not a, a big surprise, but the first lure was gonna be this Picasso Buzzbait. It's a compact little design. I think Hank Cherry uh, is who worked on it uh, with them, but a compact little Buzzbait design made specifically for soft plastic. So you can fish it like this. Uh, this is an Arsenal minnow uh, on here with a swim bait, or you could fish it with, I'll show you here in a second, a toad like this. I also threw like the Yamamoto, like flappy deal, you know, like a big uh, twin tail trailer, a number of different things you can throw on this, even a fluke if you wanted to go kind of finesse, but you can see it's got this lead keeper here. So you slide the plastic up over it and it's got that little tooth there. So when you slide the plastic down into it, it kind of grabs it and holbs it. Different from a lot of other, uh, you know, buzz baits that have like a head, you know, a fish head here with eyes on it and it's just flat. So oftentimes your lure just falls down the straight shank of that hook. I really like it because it's this compact design. You can see here maybe three and a half, four inches for just the buzzbait, of course, longer when you add the trailer, but that's what you're looking at right there. It keeps it on there well. I'm not a big buzzbait skipper, but if you wanna skip these, it holds it on there pretty nicely. I really like throwing the frog on there more. And I had a red one, a black one, and a silver one. I don't know where I put it, but um, again, these are from Picasso. They also have a double bladed version where there's two blades up on top uh, in case you have trouble with your buzzbait kind of flipping one side to the other. I still haven't found a buzz bait that 100% of the time it runs completely straight. Sometimes this one would keel over just a little bit one way or another. It was a ton of fun, a ton of blow ups on it, caught a bunch of fish. Nice little compact size made for plastics. Okay, next up again, this isn't gonna be any earth shattering news, but the Chatterbait, specifically the Chatterbait Jackhammer. Now I'm also gonna talk about a couple others because I think they have a special place and time. One is this stealth blade, so it's different get those lined up for you there. It's different than the regular jackhammer. So the jackhammer here, more of a vibration, more of a thump, you know, puts off that sound that you want for dirtier water. And uh, you can see that bright white color there. The pike absolutely love this. I don't mind catching pike. The bass loved it as well. The regular chatterbait. Now the stealth blades, so the blade is clear. It's some type of, I don't know, polycarbonate type deal. It's smaller, it's more finesse. You can still barely feel the vibration, but much more of a finesse version. And I was using this in cleaner water around grass with a fluke on the back or any type of, you know, straight tail trailer that you like. Something, um, you know, kind of a finesse package. This absolutely crushed for me as well. So I know people kind of talk crap about this one, but I liked it. It's just much more of a finesse version over this. So you don't buy this one thinking, oh, it's gonna vibrate super hard and crazy. It's more like a swim jig with just a little bit of vibration added to it. And then finally to throw in the mix, just because so many people talked about this one, the Mini Max Chatterbait. Now I'll admit, I think I only caught one fish on this and I didn't even get it on video, but it was not one that I really used uh, and threw a lot. But uh, Bass Geek, uh, Fishing with Gramps, a ton of different people talked about how this little Mini Max did so well for them. And you can see compared to the regular jackhammer there, the size difference, it's really just a little bit more compact profile, but smaller head, smaller blade, kind of a finesse version of the jackhammer. So I know people like this in the colder water, colder months, and it was warmer, um, you know, when there was more action, you know, higher metabolism in the bass, they were going to the jackhammer. So again, not a big surprise, but those three I did put more time in with this year, uh, minus the, the Mini Max, but those first two, always love a chatterbait. Okay, next up on the list, another one. I don't consider myself uh, an expert jerkbait fisherman, but I really like throwing a jerkbait. And it's one of those lures that it seems like if you can't get a bite, um, especially in cooler water for me around here, this always seems to pick up a few fish. Now these lures aren't in any specific order. These are just some of the ones I really liked. I will link them all below. Uh, of course, I've teamed up with Tackle Warehouse this year. Um, I'll leave all those below. Anytime you use those links, a little portion does come back to me. Make sure you enable cookies or tracking or whatever. That's how they track it. But if you find them cheaper somewhere else, by all means, go over there and save your, uh, yourself some money. But I appreciate that. And I will link them in the way that I'm talking about them down below to make it easier. But 
the uh, the Berkeley Stunner 112. They make the 112 and the 112 plus one. So this is the 112 plus one, means it dives just a little bit deeper. You can see they're a little bit longer bill. And kind of an interesting thing, um, I saw a deal on Instagram, Hank Cherry, uh, you know, worked with them in the development of these. And he actually, actually likes this one with the longer blade, the longer bill, when he's throwing them kind of in a little bit shallower water where he's banging them off a riprap. He said this bounces off a little bit better. Now, I've really used kind of the two different ones for, for depth if I wanted to get just a little bit deeper, I've used this one. Um, but I think he brings up a cool, uh, you know, cool point because you can see how that bill is kind of made to deflect off of things. And this is a slow sinking jerk bait. So if you're, you know, throwing this in three to five feet of water, then you move out to 10 feet of water, you can still get it down there, it sinks slower. I remember the first one I used sinked really fast. Um, and I wasn't a big fan. I'm like, this sinks way too fast for me. Every single one I've used since then um, has sank at a, a decent rate. I don't know what to tell you. Of course, that's going to depend on your water temperature as well. Uh, but I've had a lot of luck with these. Y'all just saw uh, me throwing this one later in the fall. This bronze back color that I really, really like. It's like a silver and then kind of a light kind of gold into black up on top. I was throwing that one this spring and had a lot, a lot of luck on it. And then kind of here and there in between caught a few fish, but they've got a really good mix of colors. I think Berkeley does a good job at mixing up their colors. You know, they've got some of these like this matte finish, reflective gold type finish. One of the table rock versions, I forget, I think uh, it's, you know, of course got your purple and chartreuse, kind of opaque more of your kind of ghosty white translucent yellow belly, whatever color this kind of matte purple dark back is. A ton of really good colors and I know they don't watch my channel uh, or care, but I know the first time I used the fusion hooks, the Berkeley fusion hooks, their line of hooks, I thought, man, these seem really thin. Uh, I don't like them. And since then I've become a huge fan, extremely sticky sharp, as you can see there, very good hooks. I haven't had a problem with any of them. So if you're a jerkbait angler, you want a slow sink jerkbait, this one has been awesome. Okay, moving right along. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this one because I have talked about these. I've had specific videos on these. Um, I think I beat it into the ground. A larger top water lure, and I really kind of equate it back to this, the KVD Sexy Dog. For me, this is one of my top, you know, kind of two or three, you know, a Zara Spook. Um, there's a few others that I really like, but this one and the Spook, I would say probably are my top one and two. Um, this is a little bit larger size, but it walks so dang easy. It's got that mouth that's, you know, just a little bit of a slant there to it. Good size, it's like well, four and a half inches, six eighths or seven eighths of an ounce. Cast really well, but um, I've also got the blanks from Do It that I've been painting up. They came out with uh, a blank very similar to that KVD Sexy Dog. Had a ton of success on it. And I think everybody, I painted up, I think, 30 of these. And they sold out within like two weeks. So everybody that's bought lures, I thank you all so freaking much for the support. You all continue to blow me away. And another good one to check out is the Excite Baits Heckler. And I think this was supposed to be more of like the Reaction Innovations Vixen, which I just got some of those. They're so damn hard to get. Um, this Heckler, very similar. They do have different sounds than the, uh, the Vixen. Each one of these kind of do have different sounds. Sexy dog. Do it version. Heckler. All based kind of on the same chassis, all uh, walk really well, all have caught me fish. So I guess it's kind of a crapshoot, pick whichever one you like, but a larger topwater bait like this, especially when bass are schooling and chasing fish in the fall uh, or spring, anytime you're confident using one of these, they crush. Sticking with the top water, gosh, Debo, do you like top water fishing? Yes, admittedly I do. Next up, we've got the P71 Pop R, a Rebel Classic, the Rebel Pop R. There's a reason that so many people call any type of top water popping lure a Pop R, whether it's a Rebel or not. But um, awesome lure that I've used for a long time, the regular uh, Rebel Pop R. This is the P71, a little bit bigger. See there about three inches, a little bit bigger body, still that same big cup mouth, nice sharp hooks on it, and it's got the feather treble with like the flashaboo in it on back. So it's everything you need. I think this one's called a bleeding shad. There's like a chrome black back, but it walks really easy. And I get into a phase where I like to, you know, if I'm casting up short distances against brush and stuff, I like to, you know, kind of bloop it. This does a really big bloop, the big chug, the big huge bubble that you want. Um, sometimes they really want that going slow, but I also like a top water popper that I can walk really easy. And this one does all three of those on my checklist. I know there's like the Rico people have talked about. I've still never fished one. For me, this one does it all. Uh, it's a good, you know, staple in the, the box to have just a regular Rebel Pop R. This is just a little bit bigger. I think uh, it still gets bit. I cut plenty of dinks on it. So don't think that because it's a big one, oh, I'm not going to get as many bites. Catches good fish, smaller fish. Uh, it's kind of a complete package. So this one has to go on there for me. 
Let's go over to some plastics. A plastic that I think surprised me. I knew it was gonna be one that, you know, I was gonna pick up. I, I thought it looked cool, but once I actually used it, I was even more impressed with something that I thought that was gonna be cool. And that is the Missile Baits Mini D-Bomb as a trailer. So initially I thought, you know, a little finesse jig. Here you can see it paired up with a little Chatterbait Mini Max. I trimmed the skirt just a little bit to show those claws off in back. On like the back of a War Eagle Heavy Finesse Jig, this was the June Bug color that I threw on the back of a slobber knocker on had an awesome day, caught like 15 fish on it that day. A number of different uses, it's versatile and a small little chunk uh, size with a lot of action in it. So if you're looking for something like that that can go on, you know, a chatterbait to a swim jig to a finesse jig, that's why I really like this one. Extremely versatile, a number of different ways to use it, but with that good action, it's got that good kicky movement in the back, you can see these Legs have like the ridge, kind of show you there, kind of similar to like the Strike King Rage, you know, deal. Everybody's kind of got their own version, but um, smell good, work good, look good, matches my shirt good. And they come in a bunch of the good uh, missile bait colors, you know, the green pumpkin, the bruiser flash. They've even got what I think is kind of cool, this bone color. You don't really see that in plastics much. You know, it's usually like a pearl white. I kind of like that dirty, you know, bone. They've got uh, like a, a chartreuse purple, a number, a bunch of different colors. Uh, like that red craw. I know people are always looking for that red orange plastic. Okay, last but not least, a couple that are kind of similar and I put them in the same box because they're a very similar design. I just kind of use them in different ways. The Top Spin and the Flash X Swim Jig. I get these mixed up. I'll leave the correct name on the screen. But first we've got this little Top Spin Swim Jig. So it's got the skirt. It's just like a regular swim jig, but it's got this titanium wire weed guard, which you can see you can bend this, do all sorts of things, and it pops right back to normal. So it acts as your weed guard there, but it's got a flash and there's different flashy color applications for different situations. This in fact was one I caught um, my biggest fish of the year on. It was like a nine, nine something pound uh, pike on it. And this is one that I modified. It's got the Reaction Innovations little dipper on there with this twisty tailspin thing. You can see after one big nine pound pike, what it does to a lure. I can't believe the tailspin deal stayed on. Ripped the lure in half almost completely off, but it held together, weed guard and everything held good. So it's like a swim jig uh, with a little flash on it. So maybe like a downsized finesse spinnerbait or the top spin. Uh, this thing is essentially the reverse version of instead of having a, an underspin like this, uh, if you're a bank angler, I think this works better because as you throw it out and hit it over the tops of grass and wood and such, this kind of works in your favor. It's like a little, a lot of people are saying like an old school beetle spin. Uh, but again, the old school beetle spin couldn't do this and hold up to fish with a stouter hook. So it's kind of got all those properties of a, a finesse, underspinny, flashy deal, but with good solid hardware. You don't have to worry about busting and breaking on you. And still a good, compact, small, you know, finesse looking deal. Again, both very similar that uh, the swim jig version and the top spin. All right, fishing friends, I don't like to be a negative Nancy. I don't like to rip on companies. Um, you know, I try to give my honest opinion, but if something is, is falling a little short of the mark, I like to put it out there. So number one, this one's gonna be my number one on the worst of the year because it's actually half and half. Half fits on the best of the year, half fits on worst of the year. So we're going back to top waters. This uh, Spro Flappin' Frog was one that I enjoyed. Probably my favorite top water of the year as far as covering water, throwing it in places where I would normally throw a frog instead of walking it. You're just casting this thing out and the legs on the back do all the work. Now it's made of a really stretchy Elaztec type material, which I also liked a ton because it didn't fall apart. Until, can you see how that has some ridges on there? Those are actually the ridges of this rodent uh, that was sitting next to it in my box, uh, in my truck, and it melted into it. Same thing that happened up here, there was another plastic right there touching it and it melted into it. So it's like the Elaztec stuff, it does not play well with other plastisols. And as you can see, it actually uh, melted so much that when I went and picked it up, the leg was like goop and the leg fell off. So on every single one that I had, the weight fell out of the bottom. And it sucks to say that because I like the lure so much. I really wanted to like have it as my number one, but it had to go in as number one on the worst because every single one of these, this is the weight, the hard weight down here. This one's actually been held on with Mendit uh, and it did pretty well. The other one I had did not fare so well. So every single one within like five to 10 casts, the weight fell out of the bottom and it was weightless. And what happened was a lot of the times it was running top, you know, like this. Still worked, still caught fish, but I think it's like 10, $11 for that much, you know, nine bucks, whatever it is. I don't want to have the weight fall out in five casts. Now I think Spro said they fixed this. 
Um, I did not get any of the new ones yet. I'll have to order some to try it because I really did like the product. I don't like to rag on Spro because they're a good company, but you know, when, when you release a product like that, like to me, that's something that they would have caught in testing, you know, anytime when I've got, you know, all those and every single one falls out, but I don't know, hoping that they fix this up because I really, really did like the frog. Uh, but unfortunately it's going to have to go on the worst list because of that. Okay, next up on the worst of the year, this one kind of surprised me because the looks of it in the water looks amazing. I thought it was going to have a bunch of applications for pond uh, and smaller lakes. It's the Berkeley Gilly. Now again, any of these companies that I'm talking about on the worst list doesn't mean I hate the company. I'm not bashing them. And I'm not saying don't buy these. This is just my experience, how I've used it. You know, if you're fishing from a boat or a kayak, or really clear water, or really muddy water, you know, you might have a completely different uh, experience with it than me. So take this for what it's worth, you know, my two cents. But the Berkeley Gillet, you know, I watched a number of people catch fish on it. And the thing is, in the water, throwing this around, it looks freaking awesome. But it was one of those lures that I threw a lot and just didn't catch fish on. You know, they've got a bunch of cool different colors. That one's like the old school pumpkin seed that I used to throw. They've got the really cool like red ear, um, you know, looking HD colors, uh, a bunch of really cool colors, but it just, it just wasn't one that produced. You know, I tried nose hooking them, tried some with like the side hook. I'm going to keep throwing it because it is, again, one of those lures that looks really good. I mean, you can see these like little honeycomb looking column deals on it makes the action of this. When you bring it through the water, it does really look like a bluegill. Um, so, you know, maybe trying this more around spawn, uh, some other times when fish are really focusing on bluegill. But for me, for as many times as I threw it, I didn't catch a single fish on a single ghillie. This next one's probably gonna piss off some people because a few years ago I did kind of the same thing with a very similar lure of theirs and I got a lot of hate from it. That year it was the uh, the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. This year it's the Mega Bass Sleeper Gill. I had to look up the name of it. I didn't even have one. I used Randy's and I thought it was kind of a turd. And it kind of uh, resembled the 10,000 Fish Headhunter. Both very similar, this gill type deal with you know, this supposedly hidden hook up there. That's one of my gripes of Mega Bass. They say, oh, it's got this weedless hook design. It's not It's not weedless. The Dark Sleeper and the, the gill were not weedless at all. It's this little tiny plastic up here. Now, if they left that out, I guess I wouldn't have had a, as big of a deal with it. But, you know, they market that to people saying, oh, it's weedless. But they get caught all the time. This one is a little bit stiffer. The 10,000 fish is a little bit stiffer. And kind of cool how they have this little hook that rotates out of here. The Mega Bass Sleeper Gill does not do that. But the reason I don't like these is because they're 10 bucks. The Sleeper Gill's 10 bucks. The Head Hunter is $7.99. And you can see I didn't even catch a fish on here. The eyes had fell off or got, you know, rubbed off. It's, I guess, just paint on here. From banging it into rocks and stuff, it was already starting to tear up a little bit. And hold on. You know what they bear a striking resemblance to at a fraction of the cost? I think these are like six bucks for all three of these not a huge difference minus the weedless hook guard anyway again for me the way i fished the way i threw them uh, they just didn't work for me i'm sorry mega bass 10,000 headhunter deal uh wasn't one of my favorites okay next up is another soft plastic that i really wanted to like my guy chaunch sent me these and i feel bad for saying it but it was a lure that i found hard to fit in my arsenal and it's one that i saw a bunch of people saying i'll never fish a frog again these are the best top water lure ever created it's the jackal bounty fish so i get the appeal with it right you have this big long hook you can kind of walk it back and forth like a fluke but as far as it replacing a frog no way this is definitely not going to replace a frog for me a frog can do so many more things for me than this you can get it in the thick slop it's heavier to me, this is like a fluke. I mean, I could really fish a large fluke the exact same way I could fish this. Now, Chanch, I already owe you a big pack of stuff. Uh, he's an awesome subscribe fishing friend who's sent me a ton of stuff. I finally got a package sent to him and it got lost in the mail. I was so pissed, but my guy, I will get you a new box uh, sent out. I'm sorry these did not make it on the top of my list, but I thank you for trying it. And hey, and again, this is just me. I know a lot of people that really like these had good luck with them. Um, I did not. I would rather throw a frog in the slop I know this is, you know, kind of the weedless design and stuff, and maybe along the edges of grass and such. Um, I could see this working more, but for me, I, I'm maybe I'm jaded. I like a frog. Speaking of frogs, uh, another frog that really missed the mark for me, this is the Mullix, like, Super Nato Frog or something. This is one that I kind of had high hopes for. My buddy Carter, I hope you're doing well, dude. I haven't talked to you for a minute. Um, he was throwing one of these a day we were out, and he had, like, two six-pounders miss it, like, come up. And it's got these two little, like, tornado -y legs that kick back here looks awesome in the water looks absolutely great but um, i had a debo dink grab it uh, and ripped it off within like 10 casts so 
this was it. I know they do sell, sell the separate tails, but for the cost, I think it's like an $8 lure. I shouldn't be losing the tail like that. Um, I suppose you could throw it like a froglet type deal, but I know they get big bites. I know a lot of people like them. Again, for me, any lure that's like eight bucks that I lose the tail and have to spend money to replace it, uh, I'm just not a huge fan. Okay, last up on the list is a line. For me, uh, the Dura Braid from Spiderwire. Now I have to preface this with, this goes on both sides of the good and bad. So I got the 50 pound, which I did like. It's a little bit more wiry. You can see here, a little bit stiffer. You know, it does almost keep the shape there, kind of the curls a little bit more, and it's pretty, listen to this. Kind of rough, but there's different braids for different reasons. And this one they talk about right there being 25% tougher than other braids on the market. The 50 pound, I really liked. And if I want a big, strong braid that is not gonna break on me, I didn't have any breakage issues with this. Unlike the Power Pro Max Quattro that I got in 50 pound braid and broke off on, I don't know how many fish. I think I talked about that last year. Was not a, fr not a, uh, a fan of the Max Quattro braid, but this in the 50 pound was nice. This in, it was either the 10 or 15 pound, I don't know what I did with the package, was not nice. It was very rough. I didn't think it casted very well at all. Not what I like for a finesse uh, braid. I like something real thin, actually. I didn't even add this to my best of braids, but the P-Line Spinex braid. Um, it actually changes colors every meter from orange to blue. So if you're a line watcher to me, it kind of helps um, break that up. Nice and thin, cast really well. Uh, I didn't have any breakage issues, so for a good finesse braid, I really like this. And a lot of people said that that Power Pro Max Quattro is a finesse braid. Uh, if you want a braid like that for small stuff, go with that. I didn't like it uh, whatsoever for the 50 pound Max Quattro. Kind of like I didn't like the finesse version of this stuff. Now again, for the larger, you know, 50 pound for frogging and stuff, had no issues at all. It cast it on a bait caster a lot better, but on a spinning rig, I didn't like it. So listen, that's gonna round out the best and worst lures and a, a few lines of the year. Comment below and let me know for you, what were some of your favorite and not so favorite lures from 2022? Now today's subscribe fish and friend is my guy, Scott Craft. He, uh, I just got a, a notification from him three hours ago. He was talking about the Joe's flies being good in his area. Listen, everybody who's continued to support me, y'all are gonna wanna tune in for the live this week, um, the New Year's bash. I'm gonna still do it Saturday night. I don't know if we'll have people watching, but I've got a ton of giveaways planned because I really wanna give back and say thank you to you all as much as I can. Um, I thank you, the, the, you know, the companies who've supported me, but especially you folks, because people forget that even if you have 17 billion sponsors, it doesn't matter if people aren't watching your stuff. You all make it possible, and you all are the reasons with the, the good comments and saying thank you, the reason that I keep doing this. So those are the best and worst lures for me. Uh, those are my final thoughts. I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time...